Okay everyone, we're about to go and see some gibbons. Before we do, we're going to wear our yellow jackets. We've habituated the gibbons over the last seven years to people wearing this yellow jacket. So they're very used to seeing us by now and they associate the yellow jacket with us. It means we're friends and it distinguishes us from possible hunters or people that would do the gibbons harm. So please wear your yellow jacket. Please wear some boots. Let's go and see some gibbons. We're walking into this really interesting mix of habitat types and the topography is very steep in places. All this mix of habitat encourages a really rich biodiversity here. Kausei Ma Wildlife Sanctuary is one of the most biodiverse of those remaining pockets of evergreen forest and importantly it connects with other protected areas into a million hectare area of wildlife sanctuaries. So it's a key key area for continued protection against more logging and more expansion of agriculture. We're pretty much guaranteed to see the black shank duke, which is a critically endangered primate. Kalsimar Wildlife Sanctuary, which we're in now, is the best place in the world to see these and probably their last chance of survival for these monkeys. And hopefully we'll see the yellow cheek crested gibbon this morning as we walk in the forest. Again, these are an endangered species. Kalsimar Wildlife Sanctuary holds the most important global population of them. And within about a three kilometer radius of Jahu, we've estimated that about 25% of that population is kind of sheltered within this area that we protect through tourism and community conservation. Key technique for looking for the gibbons, we're going to follow their call when they're singing. We're trying to get as close as possible to the gibbons, but we're going to move quite fast, especially when they're in the loud crescendos of their call. They're very, very difficult to find when they're not calling. They're extremely quiet. They don't actually move very much at the time. And when they do move, they move silently and extremely quickly. They can move up to 60 kilometers per hour in the canopy of the forest. So it's very difficult to see them. And that's why we're out here waiting for their call. And when we hear their call, we can stealthily but quickly move into their location and get as close as possible to them and get some views. So sometimes if we're not finding the gibbons, one of the techniques we use, so what our local guides, the local indigenous guides, they're expert in kind of imitating the call of the gibbon. And we use this only in extreme circumstances just to try and communicate with the gibbons and see if they'll respond. And that way we can find them. Cambodia suffered from logging over the past hundred years, especially. It used to be 70% of Cambodia was covered in thick forest. Today, it's a lot, lot less. But there's still a lot of hope, a lot of protected areas. Okay, quick, quick, quick. Look over here, the gibbons are moving through the trees. And over here, over here, you see them swinging? Very fast. Look, look here, guys, this is fantastic. The male gibbon is just sat up in the fork of this tree. We're so close. And you can really see we've habituated these gibbons to be relaxed in our presence. And we can get these extraordinary close views of the gibbons. This is the male. This is one of the younger males, and he's a lot more confident with us than, say, the older female. He was, ever since he's been born, he's been followed by us. So he's really used to seeing us. And he's looking around to see where the rest of his family are. That's fantastic. The local Benong indigenous community, they have really, really close connections to the forest, um, culturally, spiritually, historically. So they were a forest, forest dwelling indigenous group and were relocated during the last few hundred years, going through different wars and colonial regimes. And now they've kind of left their nomadic forest way of life behind but still there's their spiritual and cultural ties with the forest are extremely strong 
So Gibbons are really protected by the Benong, really revered. Okay, guys, look, you can see the female up here. The female, the female's really difficult to spot, but we're getting some good views here. And the female is, is orange color, whereas the male is black. Uh, the female is a lot more shy. She's a lot more timid around us. And the female is the kind of leader of the family. Everyone follows the, the females. They're the kind of boss of the family. Um, this group is really interesting. There's two breeding females um, and just the one male. So gibbons are known to be monogamous throughout the world across the different species. But here at Jahu, it's the first record of a polygamous breeding group of gibbons. So really, really cool. But the female is bright orange, the males are black, and the babies are born orange, but they'll go to black after a couple of years. They'll change their, their fur color completely. And then if the, if the gibbon is male, it'll remain black. Whereas if it's female, she'll turn back to orange at around six years old. So they have this incredible change of coloration throughout their life cycle. And you'll see, if you can see closely, you can see the, the black um, crest. So they have a crest of fur on their, on their head, which stays a little bit on end. And then you notice their cheeks. They're called yellow cheek crested gibbons for a reason. Wow, a wild Asian elephant. This is incredible. Look at this, guys. We're gonna keep it a good safe distance. It's a wild elephant and we don't want to get too close. And wild elephants in Khao Se Ma are down to just a few hundred now. Elephants are really threatened from hunting, of course, for their, for their tusks, for ivory. In Cambodia, that's not such a problem. Asian elephants are not renowned for their tusks, for their ivory. The biggest problem for elephants here is being caught in snares. But the biggest threat of all is the deforestation, especially of places like Khao Se Ma Wildlife Sanctuary. Elephants need huge amounts of space and water and resources to be able to sustain their population. So here in Khao Se Ma, we still have a few hundred left. It's a really important population in Southeast Asia for these elephants, an important place. Okay, everyone, look up. You can see the Black Shank Duke, the two of them together. That's beautiful. They're critically endangered, which means they're, they're facing really high levels of persecution. They're hunted for beliefs in traditional medicine. And they're looking down at us, but they seem at ease with our presence. That's great. We're getting some great views there. Black shank dukes are just beautiful monkeys. Look at them jumping across the, off the trees there. They're, they're not as agile as the gibbons. They crash through the branches, making all this noise. So they're fairly easy to find. Great, we've got some long-tailed macaque up here. We see these guys quite frequently. They're fairly common, the long-tailed macaque. We also get the pigtail macaque, which is less common. They're certainly threatened from, from hunting, bushmeat hunting, food. Um, but they're also a bit of a nuisance for local farmers. So a big part of what Jahu does is education with the local community. Um, trying to avoid people putting traps and snares for these monkeys um, and trying to find alternative ways that the farmers can protect their crops without endangering the lives of primates at Jahu. Yeah, that's the giant squirrel up there. That's great. The giant squirrel, the largest squirrel in the world. I mean, look at it. It's about the size of a monkey. It's fantastic. That long tail counter counterbalancing it as it rests in the branch there. These squirrels only survive in areas of forest that are protected, that are undisturbed. As soon as there's any disturbance, these squirrels are gone. So they're a real, a real true indicator of a healthy forest. So we're really lucky to have a great population of giant black squirrels here at Jahu. We see them a lot. So we've just seen a small sample, really, of the incredible biodiversity that we can find at Jahu. We've seen the key species, the gibbons, the dukes, the macaques, the giant black squirrels, and much, much more. But you're just going to have to come back and see everything else we have.